I want to welcome you back to this session where we're sharing about how to share your faith in Christ, how to share Jesus with other people, what he's done for you. And I'm with Wayne Jenkins, who uh, we're both Louisiana guys, grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, been friends for many years, and Wayne has been training people uh, for many, many years on how to share Christ with other people. So Wayne, thank you so much for- Thank you for asking me. Uh, for being a part of this. And we were, we've stopped last time talking about praying not for people who need Christ, but praying for us, labor, uh, right. for, for laborers, people who need to go in and share. There, there is a harvest. There, people are ready. People are hungry. I believe that God has people ready. We just need to be ready. But there was one thing we didn't talk about that just quickly before we get into this other, and that is the way we live. Yeah. Uh, the, our, the way we live is going to make a great impact on how, how we exactly share. So right. we need to be praying for our lifestyle or changes that need to be made in our own way we live. Or well, it, it, when when Paul when Paul back to that Colossians uh, chapter four passage when he talks about praying in our speech and praying for opportunities and clarity in our speech, he goes on to talk about our lifestyle as well and uh, living before that person. If what we live is not in, in sync with what we say, then we, we, will, we will take and destroy everything we've said. So how we treat that person, how we live our lives is vitally important to sharing the gospel. In fact, the only place in the scripture where it talks about sharing the gospel with, uh, without a word is the wife uh, living a life before that husband mm, who is lost. Right. And, and so it's a, it's, a, it's a significant part of the whole laborer's So, so that is sort of the, the platform from which we are able yeah, to share. And if, we're, exactly if right. the platform's torn down, then we... Oh, we're in bad shape. We're, yeah, so we, we need to have a platform, and the platform is really the way we live, the way we treat people, that they need to see our good works and glorify the Father. Yeah. Now, so, okay, we build this platform now. We're, we're building the platform, and so how do we share? How do we pray for the people? We're going to be talking to people um, that may be really opposed to us. Some may be very open to us. There can be a variety of types. Of, how do we pray for those people? I, I think the first thing we need to do, we, we pray with the understanding that it's not God's will that any man be lost. That's, that, that's that, clear. That perish. Yeah, that any man be perished. But But then we need to pray in light of their condition. I think... Most of us uh, who we're talking to have been saved long enough that, that we've forgotten what it's like to be lost. And so we have to go back to the Scripture. What does the Scripture say is a condition of an unbeliever? Yeah. So we who know Christ need to be uh, remember what it was like before we came to Christ. That's right. So that's the first thing, to pray, and, pray for their condition and... You pray in light of their condition. In light you know, of their condition. And, and, you know, the Bible talks about them being blinded by Satan. You know, they can't see. They've got to have their eyes open. So we're going to pray that, that God would open their eyes. I, ca I can't open their eyes. I can share the gospel, but he's the one that's got to open their eyes. And, and so I think that's, this is a critically important thing because we need to remember this is not, we're not being salesmen. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, this is a spiritual thing that we're doing. People's right. eyes are blind. So we need to pray that that, that happens. Okay, go ahead. And, and, the, and there, there's several passages that, that tell us that the man is bound. You know, he's bound. He's, he's in the kingdom of darkness. And what's got to happen, he's got to be translated or transferred into the kingdom of his dear son, according to the Scriptures. So he's got to be set free. I can't set him free. I can give him the message that sets him free. But again, that's the power of God, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, that, that really sets him free. Just So pray for, for them to be set free. Uh, you know, uh, my brother, uh, you know my brother, yeah. and you met my brother, and, and he tells a story about this. And I prayed for him for years and years and years. And after 25 years, he, he was an alcoholic. And uh, he called me and he said, Sammy, I gotta tell you what happened. He said, a policeman pulled up behind me. I was driving home drunk. <laughs> and he pulled up behind me. And I thought, oh no, and he arrested me. He said, they put me in jail. I was in the cell with a guy there for first degree murder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, he said, and he said, you know what I did? I said, what? He said, I called on the name of Jesus. And he said, Jesus set me free. The judge wanted to send me to a, uh, uh, you know, therapy and all this. And he said, I told him, he said, you can do it, but Jesus has set me free. And from that day to this day, 
He's free. And, and that's what you're talking about. There are people, only God could have done that. I, exactly I shared Christ right. with my brother, but only God could have done that. So we need to pray that they'd be set free. And, and that bondage is just a symptom of the real bondage. Yeah. You know, we've got all kinds of bondages out there, but that bondage is a simple, it's just a symbol of the bondage that he's in in, in the kingdom of darkness. And then all of us, everyone has that bondage yeah. and it's expressed in different ways. What else? And, and the Bible says, not that they will be condemned, but they're already condemned. We need to understand that man is, is condemned as he stands right now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's his condition. And he is hell bound. I think if somehow we lose sight of that, we're going to lose sight of, of, of really that person that's next door, that person that may be a brother, maybe a mother, or maybe a father, that that person is going to end up eternally separated from God in a place called hell. Yeah, you know, I, I think we've lost the sense that there is even an eternity. That's right. You know, that this life is just, this life is not the whole. This is just a short little portion and that we will step into eternity with God or without God and it's a dreadful thing to step into eternity without God. That's so, exactly right. What else? Uh, according to Ephesians and some other passages, Colossians, we, we, we're spiritually dead, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a picture of, of where we are that, that a man, uh, I can stand over a casket of a man at a funeral. That man can't resurrect himself. He has no power to resurrect himself. Now, uh, that's the way a man is who's, who's an unbeliever. He cannot save himself, but uh, he... he He's got to come to the place of realizing the only one that can bring him to life is Christ. Mm -hmm. And the message that we share is that message that Christ can give him a life and bring him new life. And, uh, but the way he is right now, he's spiritually dead. The Bible goes on and talks about him being hopeless. No hope in this world or the world to come. Mm -hmm. uh, it's terrible to live without hope. One of the, one of the three top uh, Things of needs, suicide. Needs of, of, of Americans today, and, and I think it's worldwide, and it depends on where you are as to, as to how, how far that raises on the bar, but I think it is the word hope. It's the number one, and it's the hopelessness that people face. Doesn't matter what you have. You, you can be wealthy, you can be poor, but, but you live with an utter hopelessness in your life. You know, I... I there's, and then I don't want to get into a medical thing because I know there's some medical things with this, but a lot of depression comes from when people feel hopeless. That's right. A lot of suicide comes from when people feel, I don't have any more hope. And you find a great rise in at least depression, I know, not only in American culture, but I found all over the world there's this rise, and I think it's because darkness is getting, it's getting darker. But anyway, okay, so a young hopeless. man, let me just say, young man in, 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 in college when I was there, Sammy, uh, lived next door to us in a, in a, uh, when we got married and committed suicide. I went in and found the suicide note, and, and the suicide note, the latter part of it, I, I remember all of it just like I read it for the first time, but the latter part of it says, but I've lost hope in everyone and everything. I mean, and, and that's where he was. He was just hopeless. We need to, so we need to be praying that they would see the hope is in Christ, yeah, that, that's right. that they would see hope in Jesus, okay, go ahead. And and then they're helpless. Uh, they, they can't they can't help themselves any more than what we talked about about spiritually dead. They they no matter how hard they may try, because it's a man's not justified or saved by his works, mm -hmm. so he he's helpless. Okay, so this I, I think is probably one of the most difficult things because everybody thinks, oh, I can do it. I don't need any help. Yeah, I can do it myself. And the truth is, you can't do it. We need to be praying for people. We need to pray for them in light of all of these things in this condition because we cannot raise them from the dead. We cannot give them hope. We cannot uh, do it for them, make them help, give them the Only Christ can do that. Only Christ can remove the blinders. So you need to begin to pray in light of the condition of the people you know realizing it's deeply, deeply spiritual. You're not a salesman, but you pray for the people that you know who need Christ.